Hey Toy Collectors, welcome to another super exciting outrageous toy review today. We're taking a look at the 1986 Marine Leatherneck from G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Leatherneck wasn't the first Marine to join the G.I. Joe team, and he certainly wasn't the last. 1986 included Sergeant Slaughter, Leatherneck, and Mainframe, really adding quite a few Marines to the team. Leatherneck was the only one listed specifically as a Marine, as his speciality. Sergeant Slaughter was a drill instructor, and Mainframe was a computer specialist. I don't always have a carded sample to take a look at, but when I do, I love to focus in on that. The classic G.I. Joe artwork with the explosion or digital explosion uh, from the early 80s is just fantastic. The detail they put into the artwork really makes the figures come to life. And I feel like between this artwork and the bios on the back of the package, we really did get a fully fleshed out character in this package. Plus, on top of that, if you read the comics or watched the cartoon show, you got way more characterization. For me, as a little kid, a lot of my characterization came from the cartoon. And then later, as I started reading the comic books, a lot of that influence did play a big part. But a character like Leatherneck saw way more screen time than he did comic panels. I don't think you can do a review of version 1 Leatherneck without mentioning the fact that his face is based on Ron Rudat, who was the designer of most of the G.I. Joe action figures for throughout the 80s. He's the man that drew the characters and picked the colors that would be used. He's one of the first figures to have a face sculpt based on him. Other important G.I. Joe people like Kirk Bazigian and Larry Hama would have characters based on them as well. Leatherneck is very fitting and works out really great. Ron Rudat's name was also spelled backwards for Dusty's file name. I do like looking at slight differences between the character art and the final figure. You can see that Leatherneck's sheath for his knife is actually tan in the card art but black on the figure. And the patch on his arm is predominantly red with white highlights, while the figure got an all-white paint app over his green sleeve. Pause it here if you want to read his bio. Sorry about that pesky JCPenney's price tag. At $349, Leatherneck seems kind of expensive for back in the day. Leatherneck's got that great face sculpt with the big old black mustache on them there. And a Marine Corps cover sculpted on his hat. It's got some nice detail even with the Eagle and Globe logo there. Unfortunately, that is all unpainted. As we move down into his torso, I really love this torso. There's so much great detail in here. And I love the two-tone green paint on top of the tan. So he's got this little quilted padded section of the vest below that he's got the tan shirt there's a zipper here he's got a knife and some grenades he's got camouflaged sleeves that are meant to match the collar that sticks out of that shirt his sleeves are rolled up he's got a watch and some sort of bracelet on his arms there i'd say the only real complaint i've ever had about this figure is the flesh colored paint over the green just never quite looked great. Some versions of this figure look worse than others, having sort of like a, a light green or a yellowish tinge to him. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it's just kind of the way it is. You can see he's got that badge tampoed on his arm there. Another really great detail that we got a lot in the you know mid-80s, 85, 86, 87 even. We got a lot of these kind of little rank insignias and things like that stamped on guys, which looks great. Not to mention the fact that this guy has camouflage on multiple parts of his body. He's got the camo pattern on his hat. He's got it on his sleeves and his pants. He's got a holstered pistol and a strapped-on walkie-talkie sculpted in there. And he's also got a little black belt. I love having all these little pieces of equipment sculpted on a guy. I would have a ton of fun with that stuff as a kid, imagining that they could use that equipment, even though it wasn't a removable accessory. And then to finish it off, he's got some black boots. Leatherneck comes with an M16 with a grenade launcher on the bottom. This is probably one of the greatest guns ever released in this line. Uh, it's a really good looking size with some nice detail sculpted in it. It looks great with any figure. I don't know why this wasn't remolded more often. All those terrible weapon trees we had in the 90s should have had this included on them. He also came with this green field pack that has a bedroll and a canteen on it. It's a little on the small side, but it looks pretty good. I like the color of it, and it's, it's a decent sculpt. 
and makes for a pretty nice looking soldier. I don't really know how Hasbro exactly decided who got how many accessories. You, know, you have characters like Iceberg who only had a, a weapon. You have a lot of guys that had a, a gun and a backpack. And then people like Wetsuit who came loaded with accessories. I don't know if they just had to hit a certain price point within the range. Or if a guy had a lot of paint, maybe he got less weapons. I, I don't know how they figured it out. But this is kind of the bare minimum. I think a gun and a backpack, every Joe should come with that. It's nice when they come with something a little extra like a knife or, or whatever. But overall, I think this is a really nice loadout for this figure. This mold of Leatherneck would also get reissued as a Toys R Us exclusive, part of a pack called Special Mission Brazil, with several other figures that were all repaints or retools of existing molds. This time in a brown and tan paint scheme that almost seems like maybe a desert trooper, but he's in the jungles of Brazil, I guess. Um, it's a great reuse of this mold and a really cool figure. He comes with the exact same accessories. Leatherneck would see one other release in the 90s, and we're just going to leave it at giraffe pants. Leatherneck was not one of the G.I. Joe figures I had in 1986, even though I knew that he existed and thought he was cool. Loved him in the cartoon show, always bickering with his SEAL buddy wetsuit. I'm kind of surprised I didn't have him. My grandfather was a gunnery sergeant in the Marines, just like Leatherneck. Probably in reality, my dad wasn't paying any attention to which G.I. Joe figures. My mom was buying me for my birthday or Christmas, so... There wouldn't have been that encouragement to get me the Marine figure, but I probably would have enjoyed that connection at the time. A few years later, I picked up a Leatherneck at a yard sale, and I have had a couple of them in my collection over the years. Really a great figure that I've had a lot of fun with, playing with, and, and, and having be a part of my G.I. Joe collection. In the comments down below, let me know if you had Leatherneck as a kid, or how you think he stacks up against Gung Ho, the first Marine of G.I. Joe. Thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous tour review. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out my other videos.